Yo, been here. Lately, the Home Assistant developers have been going crazy. And today, we're taking a look at one of Home Assistant's newest features, a graphical user interface for designing automations. Let's get to it. Okay, so if you're not a Home Assistant user, you're probably thinking, man, this video is completely irrelevant to me. But hold up. If you're thinking about getting into home automation, or really just any connected device, then you really should check Home Assistant out. It's free software, which can run on a lot of different computing systems. In its easiest form, you can run it on a $35 Raspberry Pi. Installing it is as easy as downloading the software, flashing an SD card, putting that SD card into the Raspberry Pi, and then you're off and running. Home Assistant lets you integrate well over 600 different devices, and counting and it lets you integrate them in some really cool and unique ways. If you've ever used if this then that, Home Assistant kind of functions just like that, except it's more capable, locally hosted, reliable, has its own graphical user interface, and has a slew of customization options. The one downside to Home Assistant is that historically, all of the automations had to be created in a text editor. It's not exactly coding, but it can be a little intimidating to the people who have never seen that markup language before. However, now that Home Assistant is beginning to deploy a graphical user interface for designing automations, getting started with Home Assistant has never been easier. Automations inside of Home Assistant have three parts. The first one is a trigger. These are things that have to happen for the automation to start. The second part is a condition. These are things that have to be met in order for the automation to continue. And then the last thing, is an action, and actions are things that happen when the automation runs, not rocket science. If you take a quick peek at the Home Assistant documentation for triggers, for example, you'll find a ton of different choices, things like events, time, sun states, sensor states, and even more powerful things like template triggers. With these triggers, you can start an automation with basically anything. You wanna turn your light red when the stock market crashes? You can do that. Want to send yourself a text message when your dog starts barking? You can do that too. On top of all of those triggers, you can add conditions, which basically will only fire your automation if something is met. So say for example, your stock market light, you can make that automation only happen when you're home. Or say for example, you can have your Google Home welcome you home after you connect to your Wi-Fi network and you open your door. Triggers and conditions together really help you start to make a smart home and makes Home Assistant stand out compared to other services like Ift, which right now only has triggers. Okay, so enough talk about automations. They're great. Let's talk about the Automation Creator tool. Okay, so the Home Assistant developers have been working really hard to add tools to the user interface of Home Assistant to make using it really easy. It started off with the Groups tool, which lets you rearrange and rename items inside of Home Assistant. Then they added some more server management tools, and then Z-Wave, and now they've added an automation creator tool. To get started using it, you're gonna to need to do a couple of things. First, you need to make sure that you're running Home Assistant version 0.45 or later. If you need help upgrading your Home Assistant instance, there's some great information on the Home Assistant website, which I linked below. Upgrading should be basically the steps detailed there or something very similar. The next thing you need to do is to add two lines to your main configuration.yaml file. This file is literally called configuration.yaml, and it lives inside of the main Home Assistant folder. The two lines you need to add are automation colon, exclamation point, include, automations.yaml, and then just a line that says config colon. It's worth pointing out that you only need to do this step if you're upgrading from an old version of Home Assistant. New installs of Home Assistant should have these added automatically. After you add those lines to your configuration.yaml file, you just need to restart Home Assistant, and you should be good to go. Assuming everything went smoothly, after a couple of minutes, Home Assistant should come back up and you can click the hamburger icon in the top left and you should see a tab called Automations. Once there, you can define your first automation by clicking the plus icon in the bottom right hand side. It's worth pointing out right now that this automations tool is in its infancy and a lot of the triggers and conditions and even some of the actions are not fully supported yet. But this is gonna change in time, so definitely keep checking back with each new version of Home Assistant because this is only gonna get better. To make your first automation, you can start by giving it a name. Then you can select the trigger type you want to use. If you need help on all the available triggers inside of Home Assistant, you can click the link right next to that, learn more about triggers, and it'll walk you through all the different trigger types. 
The next thing you need to do is to define the entity ID for that trigger. If you need help figuring out all the entity IDs for your Home Assistant instance, you can click the States tool in the bottom left-hand side. This shows you all of the entity IDs inside a Home Assistant in their current state. It's really helpful to use when you're just getting started and you don't know all the entity IDs for all of your sensors and you're just trying to figure out what it's called. For my automation, I'm gonna use the entity ID switch.wemo underscore insight. That's what my 3D printer is currently on. Next, for the state trigger, you'll need to define the state for the automation to fire on. In my case, I wanna turn a light on when I turn on my 3D printer. So the state is gonna be from off to on. The next thing you'll need to do is define the action type. For most automations inside of Home Assistant, you're probably gonna use call service. For all intents and purposes, services are things that Home Assistant can control. You can get a good sense of the services that are available for your Home Assistant instance by opening the services tool. You can do this by clicking the remote icon in the lower left-hand side. For my automation, I wanna turn on a light. So I'm gonna look in the light domain and then the turn on service. The full service name is gonna be light.turn underscore on. Next, I'll need to define some service data. Inside of the services tool, when you select a service, it should list the valid parameters for that service data. For the light service, for example, I can define the entity ID, which is the light that I wanna turn on, the color, transition time, which is how long it'll take the light to turn on, brightness, and things like that. Defining those parameters is really easy, but you have to use JSON formatting. JSON formatting might seem a little intimidating at first, but it's really super simple. You start with a curly bracket. Then in parentheses, you type the parameter name. Then you say colon. Then in parentheses again, you type the parameter data. Then you say comma, and you say the next parameter name. Then colon, then parentheses, that parameter data, comma, so on and so forth. If your parameter data is a number, like 255 or something like that, you don't have to put that in parentheses. You just keep that pattern going until you define all of the parameter data you need for your automation. You don't have to use all of the valid parameters for that service, just the ones that you want to use. The one thing you'll need to do after you define the last parameter is to remove the comma and add another curly bracket. After that, the service data should be defined. And if you want, you can go ahead and hit call service, which should make that action go ahead and happen. Okay, so going back to our automation, you can go ahead and copy and paste that service data that we are working on in the services tool into the automation. After you do that, your automation is finished and you can click the save icon in the lower right hand side and your automation is ready to rock and roll. Okay, so that's the automations tool. But what if you're a power home assistant user and you already have a ton of automations you've created that now don't work with this new automations formatting? It can be a real pain, but fortunately there's a couple things you can do. If you don't wanna use the automations tool with your old automations and you just want them to work with home assistant versions after 0.45, you can add an old automation section by just saying automation space old colon and then putting all of your old automations under that. The other thing you can do is to add all of your old automations to the YAML list that Home Assistant is creating inside of that automations.yaml file. Depending on how you had your old automations formatted, this might just be as easy as copy and pasting into that automations.yaml file. But it's worth pointing out that every entry inside of that automations.yaml file needs to have a unique ID. Before Home Assistant version 0.45, I had all of my automations broken up into different files. So migrating into this YAML list would be a real pain to do it manually. I'm sure somebody's gonna come out with a tool that does this way easier, but I found a cool way to compile them all into the same list with Notepad++ that was pretty easy to do. First, you'll need to download Notepad++ if you haven't already. The next thing I did is I made a local backup of my automations folder, which had all of my Home Assistant automations in it. Then I took all of the files that were inside the subfolders and I dragged them to the root directory by just going into search, typing in YAML, and then just dragging all of those found files to the root directory. Next, I created a desktop shortcut for Notepad++. The next thing I did is I went to the plugin manager and I searched for a plugin called Combine. Installing it's as easy as checking the box and then hitting install. Then I took the folder which had all of those YAML files in it and drag that over the Notepad++ icon and release the mouse button. This opens up all of those individual YAML files inside of Notepad++ in different tabs. From there, I went to Plugin, to Combine, to Start, and then in the window that popped up, I checked the boxes for Insert File Name and Insert Line Feed. Now here is where the party started. 
I had to take that giant blob of text and convert that into a formatted YAML list. To do that, I used the find and replace function. I started by searching for the file location and replacing that with id colon space. Then I had to get rid of the YAML file extension. So I just searched for .yaml and replaced that with nothing. Next, I selected the entire block of text by holding Alt and Shift and using my mouse to select everything. Then I hit spacebar twice, which moved the entire block of text over two spaces. Then I searched for space, space, ID, colon, and replaced that with dash, space, ID, colon. After that, I had my formatted YAML list ready to rock and roll. From there, I hit Control A to select everything, and then Control C to copy it, and then I went over to my automations.yaml file and pasted all of that into that file. After that, I hit save, restarted Home Assistant, and now I can see all of my automations inside of the automations tool. This is gonna be really handy as the Home Assistant developers continue to work on that automations tool. I'll be able to change all of my automations on the fly, super easily, and then hopefully one day, I'll never have to use a text editor with Home Assistant. Looking forward to that. Anyway. I think that's about it for this video. Hope this helped you get started using the automations tool. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. I'm really excited to get back into some hardware videos soon and to show you guys what some of this stuff is piling up behind me. But until then, happy automating. Cheers. Oh yeah, that automation for my 3D printer works great.